Hi guys, so today we will be continuing with epistasis. We did dominant epistasis in the last few videos. Today we will be doing recessive epistasis. So if you remember, epistasis means when a gene at a different locus will put an effect on the present gene, on the phenotypic gene, correct? So in this case, just like in dominant epistasis, we had the dominant pair showing an effect or expressing itself. Here, the recessive homozygous genotype will be able to suppress the non-alleles, right? So, the recessive homozygous genotype in this case becomes the epistatic gene and the non-alleles which get suppressed are the hypostatic ones. So, a very good example would be the bulb color in onion, allium sepa, right? In onions, we have three predominant uh, bulb colors that we get. We have a red, we have a yellow and we have a white. Now, normally, these two come from the same gene. Red being the dominant allele and yellow being the effect of the recessive allele. So, a capital R and a capital R would give you red or a capital R and a small r will also give you red whereas a small r and a small r will give you a yellow. Correct? But, however, in this case, there is a gene called the I gene or, or the inhibitor gene which produces a protein which inhibits the pigment of the hypostatic gene. Therefore, now, if this particular gene is present in its recessive homozygous condition, then no matter what the configuration of the R gene is, you will always get a white bulb. And if it is in a, even in a heterozygous dominant condition, then the R will show its effect in the true sense where capital R, capital R will give you a red bulb and a small r, small r will give you a yellow bulb. Correct? So, in the next video, we will do the cross. I hope this was clear. Thank you.